Okay, we have a layered Photoshop file of a skeleton um, here. Um, they have all been labeled so they can be identified. And we're going to save it as just an ordinary layered Photoshop file, a PSD document. And then we're going to import it into Adobe Animate CC. And then we're going to animate it using the Bone tool. Okay, so here we are in the Animate CC program. We've opened it up and we need to, in the Create New column, we're going to click on HTML5 Canvas. It will create um, a canvas for us. Here we are, uh, it's got the timeline, it's got a canvas here, and it's got the settings over here on the right where it's got the properties and also it's got our tools. Now we'll need to import our Photoshop file we just saved as a skeleton. So if we go to File, we go to Import and we go Import to Stage. Now this will bring it straight onto the stage. We can put in the library and then drag the individual components, but as it's a layered Photoshop file that we want to bring it in as it was in the Photoshop um, document that we saved, then we're gonna to go to Import to Stage. Now, once we've done that, we will then select the file. We will come along and click Open, and then we've got the panel. Now, in the panel, we need to save all these layers as movie clips so we can animate them. Now, first of all, down at the bottom, it's got Layer 1, so if I turn that off, okay, I will now click on Create Movie Clip and I will type in and call that head, which is exactly what the layer's name. Then I'll click on the next one, again, movie clip, and call that body. And then again, move on and go uh, movie clip on top right. Now we need to go through all of these and repeat the naming process throughout Okay, so I've gone through them all and I have created movie clips for each of them. And the last thing I need to do before I bring it in is go down to the bottom here where it's got set stage size to the same as a Photoshop canvas. Otherwise, when we bring it in, um, the image will be clipped because we're importing it to a canvas size that's smaller. Once we've done that, we just need to click import. Now, once that's brought in, you will see it's now created a canvas and all our objects are on there. And you'll see they're all uh, presented and called um, the layers that we've exported. Now we have layer one, which is the first layer we had in um, Animate. So if I just delete that, then that'll just get rid of that file. Okay, so here we are. So we're going to start to animate using the bone tool. So first of all, what we will do is go for these two items over here on the uh, left side. Um, we'll just bring them so they join up like that. And then I shift click to select them both. Now I will go to the bone tool and you'll see it over here or you can press M on your keyboard. I click here and first of all, I click on the top here and I drag it down. If I don't connect it to the next symbol, which is the lower part of the arm, you'll see it'll have a no way sign. I need to connect it just on the other side. That's fine. And then once I've done that, I've, I've got that. If I try and do another one, you'll see again, it's got no way. So what I would have done is really need to export a separate layer here of just the hand and I could have put a joint here. So, um, but that's fine. I'll show you how you animate that. If I come over and get the select tool, uh, I can do this. So you'll see here, that's how it's animating. Okay, so that's done. Now you'll see down here, it says Armitage 1. So what I need to do is just change his name. So I come down here and I'm gonna go left arm and that will identify it. Okay, I'll just delete anything that's in there. So that's uh, the uh, left arm, I'll just delete that. Okay, so we've, we've identified that. Now I'll go over to the other side and here's the uh, right arm. So I'll click on here, or right arm as we look at it. I bring those two elements together and then shift click them. And again, I'll go to the bone tool. I'll go up to the top here and I'll click and I'll drag down again into the second part of the arm. 
and I've got that. If we go and get the select tool, we can test it and see how it's working. There we go, that's working and animating. Now, what I need to do is here, where it's got armature three down the layers, I'm going to call that right uh, arm. So we identify it. Now, once we've got that, um, now it's time to move on to the uh, legs. So again, I make sure I've got the select tool and I will say, go over here to the left side and bring in, so they join up and then shift click both of them. I make sure they're not touching any other elements because if they are, they will also be part of that animation. So if that is the case where you've got anything here, you see the body um, is overlapping that. So I'll just move the body a bit out of the way. And when I've got that, I can see their distance themselves from each other. Okay, so I'll shift click those two parts of the uh, left side leg here. And again, I'll go over and get the bone tool. I click up here and I drag down into the second part and then that's done. I get the select tool and you'll see it's moving. Okay, uh, next thing, I'll get the leg on the right. I'll move those two elements so they're joined up. And again, shift click them both. I need to make sure that the other elements are out of the way. So with, the, with that, um, I can move those elements out of the way, make sure they're not, anything's overlapping there, that's fine. So shift click them again to check. And then again, um, I'm going to get the uh, bone tool here. And I'll just drag that down. And then I'll get the select tool and just check how that works. Okay, that's coming up as armature seven. So I need to say, uh, it's going to be right leg or right leg as we look on it. Okay. And I need to go to Armitage 5, which I've forgotten. And that should have been the left leg as we look at it. Okay. Now we've got um, those sorted. Now, the last thing we need to do, um, we can always do the body. So if I click up here, I move the head down a bit and put them both there. Okay, I shift click those two elements. I go over to get the bone tool. I'll just click about here down the pelvis. I drag that up and I sort of put it here on his head. And now if I just sort of move that around, you'll see it's sort of doing that. That seems to be okay. We'll try and fix um, how it's moving around. But basically we've got those two sorts of elements on there. Now, the last thing I need to do is just actually move these other components in. So I get the transform tool, which is third down the tools, and I can click on, whoops, if I come over here and shift click these two elements, I bring that over. And then again, I can shift click these two elements and bring that over. And again, shift click both those elements and bring those over and finally shift click both the arms that are on the um, left over here and then I've got it. Now I can get the selection tool and this is where you would you know, come along and make sure you know you have those sort of elements selected like that um, to just get those sort of things going and there we go. So we might need to move those around um, and pull those out okay so basically now we've got him so we've got him where he's having all these movements and we're using the select select tool and that's fine and we're ready to animate now down here you'll see um, these ones called armitage and you have all those um, sort of selected on there and what it's done is moved all the information around you can if you want uh, move these um, all these sort of armitage layers that we've renamed and you can put them certainly further up because what it's just done is transferred all those up there so we've got all those so we, that's how you would come along and animate those rather than these objects that are further down okay so once that's done um, we look at some things of how you can constrain stuff now we've got this and you'll see here 
it's obviously it's a little bit difficult to move it around sometimes but we've got that and his arms bending out like those things so we can sort of move these things around and then move it like that now once we got those things if we wanted to come along and say just click on here and we uh, it turns green if we come over to the side it's got joint um, rotation and we've put constrain it's got minus 45 for the um, left offset and it's got um, right offset 45 degrees now if we move those around you'll find that what it's doing now is not going all the way around it's sort of having uh, a more natural phase so it won't bend out like that it's constrained to 45 again we'll come over to the other side we click there you'll see a little pin tool and we'll do the same again and as a default it does that so that's fine if we move those you'll see again it's not doing that so it's more natural and the last ones we'll do if you see those moving around we click there on his knee and you'll see the pin appear and again constrained to 45 and you'll see that it will probably not bend out so you'll have a natural sort of movement though he's not doing any dislocation and again we'll click over there on the uh, right leg or the right leg as we look at it over there to joint rotation again go to the default okay we've done that on all of them so it's 45 and um, on each of those so if we've got all those things so now everything is constraining so it's near enough natural i guess okay i'm ready to animate so uh what i will do is go to say frame 15 and i'll sort of shift click each of those renamed armitage layers now once i've done that i'm going to press um, f5 on my keyboard and that will just um, stretch them all out 15 frames okay i'll select the uh, left arm here on the stage make sure i've got the selection tool i'm on frame five on the timeline and the left arm is selected what i can do is i can now um, control click here and i can insert pose now if i now move the arm up a little you'll see if i take the timeline back it's moved it to there so if i come over here um, with the, um, the right arm as we look at it. Now this time I will just move that up a bit and you'll see it will add a keyframe for me or a pose. Now you'll see it's got those two movements. Again I'm on frame five and if I move his leg up like that or her leg um, you'll see again it's put a move there like that. Okay so back to frame five and I can just then move that on like that and then finally I'll just click up here and maybe I'll move his head slightly okay so when I move back you've got something like that now I'll go to frame 10 and once I'm there again I'll sort of straighten these out like that I'll move his head over to the other side I'll then move his arm up a bit more and then move those up a bit more and you'll see it's added all keyframes and if i drag that over you'll see what's happening here and then finally i'll just go to um, 15 and again i'll just move these up a bit to just move them around may not be a nice natural movement but it'll give you certainly an idea of how certainly using the bone tool works in this way okay so if we go back here you've got this moving around if i now get it to a loop and if i play that i'll just drag the loop out so it covers the 15 frames uh, if i come down here and play it you'll see he's moving around now if i want to test it i go up to control and i go test it will open it up in the browser uh, I'll just um, move that down so I can see it, all the magnification and you'll see he's moving around okay so it's a matter of really experimenting with the uh, certainly the the bone tool it's pretty straightforward can be you know a little bit fiddly sometimes but with a little bit of practice you can have fluid movement and it saves creating individual keyframes and doing very 
complicated animation, it certainly speeds up the animation process.